Hi everybody, it's Sasha and today I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks for using the Louette S17. It is a bobbin lead wheel, which means that the tension works a little bit differently than a scotch tension or a double drive wheel. So that's what we'll be focusing on. I want to start by showing you one of my favorite features of the S17. It's this hole and slit in the bobbin. It is so clever. That's for your leader to go into. So this is just uh, some commercial yarn that I've tied into a loop with an overhand knot. And then you can use a pencil. I have a knitting needle. You poke that knot down into the hole. And when you pull the yarn into the slit, now it's attached firmly. So that is really nice compared to some of the other wheels that I've used. You'll also notice as I took off the flyer and the bobbin, the drive band stayed back here on this black knob. That's the rest position for the drive band. You always want to put the drive band back when you're done spinning because leaving it over the whirl on the bobbin can let it get too stretched out and it won't work well. Particularly if you leave it over the largest whirl for a long time and then it's kind of that size and you put it on the smallest whirl, it's going to slip. You're not going to get good action from your wheel. So let's talk a little bit about how the take up system on this wheel works. I've got my leader attached. I'm going to put it through the hooks on the flyer. A quick note, I love the Louette flyer because the hooks are offset. So if you change from side to side as you're changing hooks, you're going to get a really nice even fill on your bobbin. And it's amazing. Put the leader through the orifice. You don't need a hook. You can just stuff it through with your finger. And then I'm just turning the wheel with my hand so it'll go slowly. You can see that while I hold tension on the yarn, the bobbin and the flyer turn together. And this is adding twist. You can see I'm starting to build up a little bit of twist here in my leader. As soon as I release the tension, the flyer doesn't want to move, but because the drive band is around the bobbin, the bobbin keeps moving, that's what winds on. Now the flyer moved because I put the tension back on the yarn. So holding tension, you're adding twist, releasing the tension, you're winding on. This is the other thing, if you're coming from a scotch tension wheel, this is going to feel really weird. You can't just pull the yarn back out, you actually have to reverse treadle to get it off the bobbin. That took me a while to get used to. So, if you're having trouble with your tension, a lot of people find that bobbin load wheels, particularly at first, have very strong tension compared to what they might be used to. So it feels like the wheel is really pulling on the fiber or it's sucking it out of your hands and onto the bobbin before you're done with it. So that's where you need to be mindful of adjusting your tension. This is actually the brake band. And because it's a bobbin lead wheel, the brake goes over the flyer and clips in to the plastic on the other side. And you adjust the tension by turning the screw. I don't know if you can see this, but you'll be able to see it really easily on your wheel that turning one way moves the little metal, uh, the plastic peg up and moving the other way moves it down. So the further down you move it, the tighter the tension, because there's a lot of friction on the flyer, the flyer's going to want to stop sooner. This is going to have very strong take up when you tighten your tension all the way down. So they're moving together and I barely have to let up at all before it's winding on. As opposed to very, very loose tension, where I can let up and it's still adding twist. I really have to kind of give it the go ahead to take that fiber up, or in this case, the leader up onto the bobbin. So when you're first starting out, especially if you feel like your take up is too strong, check and make sure that your brake band is very, very loose. Or like I did at the beginning, you can take it all the way off. That doesn't hurt anything. Um, and especially if you are not sure whether your tension is loose enough or not, taking it off shows you what all the way loose feels like. 
Now, if you have taken the brake band off and you're still feeling like there's just so much take up and it's pulling too hard, if your wheel is brand new, it might need some lubrication. So we talked to the manufacturer and what they recommend is for the first eight to 10 hours that you spend spinning on this wheel, that you put some chapstick or some Vaseline right here on this metal cup in the front. And that will help to lubricate the nylon on the flyer. After the first 10 hours or so, it's soaked up plenty and it won't need any more. And that should take care of it. Now, that being said, when I first got this wheel, I didn't know that. And so I got online and I was reading all of these fora about how oh, you really need to oil bobbin lead wheels, and Louette wheels need so much oil. And so when I was had, because I had trouble at first with it yanking the fiber out of my hand, so I went and got my sewing machine oil, and I oiled the metal cup, and I also oiled back in this plastic hole where the end of the flyer goes in. And I found that that helped so much. When we spoke with the manufacturer, they said the one drawback to using oil like that is that it can attract dirt and dust and when you're doing something with fiber of course there's going to be a lot of little loose pieces of fluff um, and you don't want a lot of buildup back in that hole because um, it can cause a lot of friction and make things more difficult to work with so if you do oil it back there just be mindful of that and make sure that you're checking and cleaning it out regularly. I do want to point out that there are two places on the Louette wheel that should never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, be oiled. And that's the bearings on the drive wheel. So you have one on the front. It's where the Conrad attaches to the drive wheel. And you have one on the back beam where the drive wheel attaches to the back upright. Those are sealed, self-lubricating bearings. And if you try to oil them, what the oil is going to do is actually destroy the seal. And then all of the lubrication that was sealed in is going to fall out and your wheel is not going to work well. So never, ever, ever oil any of the bearings on the drive wheel. I hope that that helps some of you who might be new to bobbin lead wheels. If you have any other questions or things that you'd like me to cover, please just leave a comment. I'll see you next time.